I feel so 20th century. I, I don't have any pictures. Um, you have to look at me. Well, you, you don't have to look at me, but you know, I, that's all I have to offer, unfortunately, by way of visuals. I also feel uh, a little out of place, but we'll see, because I'm here to t speak against positive thinking. And I know that sounds really twisted and mean, like taking a stand against whole grain foods or world peace. So let me explain right to begin with. I am not against having a nice day. I am not against happiness. I am for smiling. I, in fact, here's my, my real credential. I wrote a book entirely about joy. It's called Dancing in the Streets. I don't know if it's translated uh, into Spanish. Dancing in the Streets, A History of Collective Joy. So that's just to get that out of the way. Because more recently, I've been thinking a lot about the American ideology of positive thinking. The idea which really does originate in my country, that um, you have to be positive. You have to be cheerful. You have to be upbeat. And if you're not already that way, you better get to work on making yourself more upbeat and cheerful, etc. Now, I first encountered this ideology, uh, this sort of mandatory positive thinking, about uh, 10 years ago when I was being treated for breast cancer. Um, my first thought was, uh, you know, to reach out to other women who had gone through the disease or were going through the disease and you know, get some support, get some information, get some sisterhood. That is not what I found. What I found was this sort of mandatory optimism in the breast cancer culture, being constantly told to think positively about my disease, uh, in fact, <laughs> to embrace the disease as a good thing. Because it turned out in this ideology that surrounds cancer, and not only breast cancer, um, it, the disease is not a problem at all. It's uh, not even an annoyance. It is a gift to you, um, for which deserving of gratitude. For example, there, there's even a book called The Gift of Cancer. You can go on the internet and order yourself a t-shirt that says, thank you, cancer. Um, my feeling is, you know, my feeling at the time was not grateful. In fact, um, you know, if, you, uh, if your idea of a gift is cancer, get me off your Christmas list right away. You know, it's not... Um, and I'll tell you, I'll just give you an example of this. I, I posted a statement on the message board of the largest American breast cancer organization. Uh, and I put this up, my subject line was angry. Very bad. And I, I listed some things I was angry about. Uh, I was angry about the very debilitating effects of the treatments of the disease. I was um, irritated by my health insurance company. That's not something you would understand here, but... Um, and I was very, very disturbed that here's a disease that is epidemic, and yet we don't know what causes it. You know, it's like, we don't even, we don't know what the environmental causes are. So, the responses I got from other women, in this case, urged me to get over my bad attitude. One woman wrote back to me and said, Barb, you need to run, not walk, to get some counseling. Uh, and it turns out, you know, that as I came to see, that there was a medical reason they thought they were telling me this. And the idea was that being positive was actually the key to recovery. And you, you can find that over and over again in the popular cultural culture that surrounds breast cancer. Um, and not only uh, breast cancer. So how does this positive attitude um, help you recover from cancer? Well, very 
Uh, the, the, what we're always told is, um, and this probably just sounds so like a cliche to you, a positive attitude boosts the immune system. You've heard that, right? And that's what helps fight the cancer. Well, as it happens, I have a PhD in cellular immunology. You cannot fool me with that kind of stuff. There is one, no evidence that the immune system fights cancer, most cancers. It's sad, we'd like to teach it to fight cancer, but it doesn't. There is secondly, no evidence that a positive attitude boosts the immune system. Although you see that repeated again and again. If you look at the actual papers that are cited, they're very dodgy. They're very, uh, in fact, they often have contrary results. More directly to the point, we now have studies, um, sort of meta-studies, that show that there is no evidence that positive people, cheerful people, are more likely to survive cancer of a variety of kinds than people who are see, you know, rate themselves as kind of gloomy. And I should say that there are a lot of claims about the effect of uh, being positive or even being happy on longevity for, any, for all reasons. As I look at those carefully, they fall apart. Now, I don't have time to dissect them. Happiness, by the way, uh, just to follow up on Allison, should not need to be justified as a health measure. You, know, you shouldn't have to say, oh, I think I should be happier so I'll be healthier. It's enough to be happy, all right? Anyway, there I was in uh, 2001 being told, essentially, as I can understood it, that if I did not recover, it would be my own fault because I hadn't been positive enough. And, you know, over, in the years that followed, well, I'm, I'm here, right? So I could write a book on how being really grumpy will get you through cancer. But I, I began to see this going on in more and more areas of life. Uh, you know, where there is a problem, it's certainly in my country, and this has import as it gets exported to other countries. Where there is a, is a problem, you can cure it by positive thinking. Poverty, for example. There are hundreds of self-help books available uh, in my country on how to, you can attract money to yourself, they use that word, by positive thinking. Uh, things like low wages, unemployment, those are just excuses for being poor. Those are just excuses for why you're not rich. You could have it if you were willing, if, the, if you could overcome this obstacle in your mind to getting rich. And we have a whole industry, which we have exported around the world now, um, of, called motivation, the motivation industry, to spread the word that you can have uh, what you want by positive thinking and you can get it by paying for motivational speakers, motivational books, DVDs, or one thing that I've always been amused by in my country, uh, the li many little um, objects that can make you more positive. Little desk access accessories, posters to put on the wall, coffee mugs, all of them with messages telling you to be happier and more positive uh, all the time. I had, you know, you do get tired of it. There's even in the United States a, a line of retail goods called, that has the motto, the motto, life is good on everything. T-shirts, car appliances, life is good. I was in the check, checkout line of um, the grocery store and I saw behind me a man wearing a T-shirt that said, life is crap. This was shortly after the financial meltdown. And I thought, Hey, my man, you know, somebody. <laughs> and, and he said it was, it was a protest to the, all this uh, positive outlook stuff. Now, it's not always voluntary in my country to be positive or not. Uh, it's imposed on people. It's particularly imposed at the workplace. Con uh, workplaces make conscious efforts to instill a positive attitude I'm always hearing from people who read things I've written, um, writing to me to say that they were fired 
because they were not positive enough at the, at the job. You know, they just, they, they didn't evince the kind of passionate exuberance that the boss wanted from them at all times. In fact, you can, you can see that the, and I'm not saying this is a causal relationship, but there's a correlation between the rise of corporate positive thinking in America and the era of downsizing, of corporate downsizing. Because this motivation industry provided a way to manage people and motivate them when you, you couldn't offer them a job that would last, when you couldn't offer security or any promotions. And so, you know, people who were starting in the 90s were being laid off in corporate downsizing. They, were, they would be, have a speaker come to them or they'd be given a book to read telling them that losing a job is actually a good thing. It's a growth experience. You should embrace it. There was a, a best-selling book before the meltdown uh, called, with the title, We Were Fired and It's the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Us. So you can see this in parallel to the, to the cancer case. Um, you take people who are going through a terrible thing in their lives, you tell them it's not really a terrible thing at all. Uh, in fact, it's an opportunity to become more evolved, more spiritual, more in, you know, in touch with whatever. In my case, I would have to say, camping cancer did not make me more spiritual or evolved. It simply made me meaner. Um, and then you tell them that the cure for their problem is positive thinking, um, you know, and to stay away from people who are not positive thinkers because they will bring you down. Never go near a complainer because that's negative and the negative vibes will affect you. There are actually cases in the um, United States of breast cancer support groups expelling women when their cancer metastasizes, when it spreads and it's clear that woman is going to die. Because if, why would you want her around? She could bring the group down. <clears throat> There's also supposedly a big reward for thinking positively, which is, uh, was advertised by the very successful book in worldwide, the book called The Secret in 2006. And if you read that, um, you will know that the universe exists to do your bidding. You can have whatever you want just by visualizing it. You just send out your orders to the universe and you will get back what you ask for. And in the book, you know, it was actually the DVD that goes with the secret. There's um, a scene where a woman is admiring a necklace in a jewelry store. She wants it. She wants it so much. Next thing you see, she's wearing it. She attracted it to herself, is the explanation. Actually, we call that burglary, but that, you know, somehow it was just drawn to her. Uh, in the uh, book, one of, uh, this was also a bestseller in the years before the, cri uh, the crisis. Uh, one po uh, motivational uh, thinker tells you how to get rich, and I'm going to quote it a few lines here exactly uh, from his book, place your hand on your heart and say, I admire rich people. I bless rich people. I love rich people. And I'm going to be one of those rich people too. <laughs> you just feel the money coming your way. Uh, and this, this affected uh, evangelical Protestantism which is, you know, a major part of American religion, where we, we went from um, old line Protestantism with its emphasis on hell and damnation to a new view that God wants you to be rich. God wants you to have a bigger car. He wants you to have a bigger house. Get with the program. Now, you may be wondering what's, what's wrong with this, right? You know, what's why should I be criticizing something, you know, the idea of people just thinking in a comfortable way, thinking in a way that may be diluted, but makes them comfortable from moment to moment. Well, there are two things I think wrong with it. 
One, I'm going to be completely dogmatic about this. And I'm going to say that delusion is always dangerous. Always. And the big example I will give you, would give you is the financial crisis three years ago. Many things contributed to how that began in the United States. Great inequalities in wealth, runaway greed, so on. But the American habit of mandatory optimism was part of it, too. Nobody, except I can think of two economists, was willing to say that housing prices might ever go down again. That's all you heard. They would just go up and up and up. Uh, ordinary people who were not paid very much relied on credit to buy things and were encouraged to rely on credit to buy things. But the most, I think the, the worst excesses in positive thinking went on at the top. At the top of the finance industry, as in all of corporate America, you know, there was a strong, this sort of cultishness about positive thinking. If you said in 2006, and if you were even a vice president in a finance company on Wall Street, and you said, excuse me, I'm worried about our exposure to bad debt. I don't think we can go on with this business plan. If you said that, you were fired. Because who wants to be around a negative person? The, it was Lehman Brothers, the, um, the, the head of the real estate division of, real, uh, of Lehman Brothers, uh, said something like to that effect in 06 and was fired for being so negative. So why didn't we see it coming? Well, some people did see it coming. But anyone who spoke out about how capitalism was teetering on the edge was silenced or purged from the organization. I wish I could give you a fuller report on the effect of the crash and the recession on positive thinking. I would, my general impression is it's still doing a brisk business. Uh, at the time, as of three days ago, the leading Republican presidential candidate, Herman Cain, for example, uh, is, who is himself a motivational speaker, you know, he, he does this. His advice to the unemployed was, quote, if you don't have a job and you're not rich, blame yourself. That's, there it is. So there's a danger when you delude yourself. Secondly, um, a big problem, is I think this is cruel. I think it's cruel uh, to tell a person who has a disease, uh, a possibly lethal disease, that they, it's up to them whether they get better and they just have to change their attitude. In fact, you know, some oncology nurses are beginning to say, stop it. It's putting too much burden. It's putting a new burden on a patient who now has to work. It's like having, and that was how I felt at times. Oh, I got two diseases. I got cancer and I've got my bad attitude. I decided to hold on to the bad attitude, of course. Um, it's cruel to the victims of economic hard times, uh, telling people who are poor that they're poor because they're resisting wealth. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have seen in uh, newspapers in the United States co comments from people who've been out of work for months or even years, and they're always quoted as saying, but I'm doing my best to stay positive, and I want to say, why put in all, the, all of that effort? Why not be angry? There's something wrong here. When you have all these skills and talents and experience and nobody has any use for them, you can be angry. Well, finally, this is beginning to happen uh, in the United States and other places. And here's something now that makes me happy. Uh, right now, thousands of Americans are protesting. Uh, in actually in that last count, 1,600 cities. They are occupying, you know, they are camping out. You know, we got, we, we got the idea from Spain and Egypt and places, but it, it's, really, it's really spread to the even small towns in America. And they're not doing it because they are sure that they are going to win. They are not doing it because they are so optimistic 
that they're going to achieve, or I should say we, are going to achieve a more egalitarian and just society. No, they're doing it because they want change, know they have to have change, and are willing to take great personal risks to bring that change about. I just want to end on a very important point, and that is that the alternative to positive thinking is not negative thinking. In fact, negative thinking can be just as delusional as positive thinking. If you want to convince yourself everything is going to turn out wrong, you can do that. Um, the, the radical alternative I want to propose to either positive or negative thinking is just realism, trying to be realistic, which means to try to understand those things that threaten us or that are holding us back or that are pushing us down, like unemployment, like losing our homes and so many other things, or disease, to try to understand those things and figure out together the best way to make change, to do something about it. And I, I think, you know, for one of the wonderful things about what Pablo Herrera said, uh, this morning to me was a reminder that we actually are a species that takes great pleasure in cooperating and working together for change. Thank you.